Leader of the Opposition, Jeremy Corbyn. Welcome to the programme. Thank Mr. you, Andrew. Your Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell, has said Brexit offers, quote, enormous opportunities. What are these opportunities? Well, the opportunities are the opportunities that uh, we all want to take, which is of an investment-led economy, is of higher wages, is of a good quality manufacturing industry, and a good trading relationship with Europe, because after all, approximately half of all our trade, both manufacturing and services, is with the European Union at the present time. And many of our industries, as you know, are closely interlinked with production across the continent. So don't we have all these opportunities if we wish to take them at the moment? I don't understand how leaving the EU improves these opportunities. The changes would be that uh, the European Union would not be able to influence an economic model. One of my concerns I expressed about reform of the European Union was uh, its um, way it wanted to prevent governments intervening to protect industries and I think governments should intervene to protect industries. Some are better at it than others but actually the reality is we're leaving the European Union so let's look to the relationship with Europe in the future and the way in which the government is going to pursue those negotiations. So more state intervention after Brexit if there was a Labour government, more state intervention in industry. I've always said this because I do think we need to have an investment-led economy. We do less investment than most countries in the OECD and certainly most across the European Union. We need to invest in high-tech manufacturing industries and sustainable industries and jobs. We have great levels of inequality in Britain, amongst the greatest in Europe, and Prime Minister Day is talking about the possibility of trading under WTO rules uh, on failure to reach an agreement with Europe. That would be pretty catastrophic for most of our industries. You've set out six tests, the Labour Party, for mm -hmm. Theresa May in the negotiation yeah. process. One of them is, as I was saying to the Prime Minister, the exact same benefits as we currently enjoy as members of the single market. Now, as I said to her, I say to you, you know that's mission impossible. Well, David Davis said this in the House on, I think, the 24th of January. Doesn't make it right. No, <laughs> many th David Davis says many things. This is so very why true. have you made a one-year well, test? Because it's a test on the government. The government is saying that they will achieve that. That's our test to them. Now, how do you achieve it? Well, you achieve it by the basis of which you trade within the European market. And I, gi I give an example. I mentioned industries. Car industry, million and a half engines made in Britain by Ford, Half a million cars made in Britain, a million engines have to go to Europe to be uh, put into cars. The same with Airbus, same with Rolls-Royce, same with lots of companies. There is a huge integration. That integration has to continue, otherwise it's very hard to see how those big industries are going to remain in Britain. Do you believe we should remain members of the single market? I don't think we can be members of the single market if we're not members of the European Union. So the issue is one of access to the single market. So it's, it's a an free trade deal. It's an agreement which would so be a trade deal with Europe. So yes. on that, your policy is the same as the government's? Our policy is that we would move might and main to make sure we have that trade relationship and we would not be threatening, which is what the Prime Minister was doing in the latter part of her interview, as saying, well, if we've got to trade under WTO rules, World Trade Organization rules in the future, right. we might adopt our own economic model, but which can only lead to lower levels of taxation uh, and all the problems that come with that. But you both agreed... Corporate that taxation. You, you both agreed we need a free trade agreement post-membership uh, of the EU. Should we remain members of the Customs Union? The Customs Union is the trade arrangement for the rest of the world. If we remain members of the Customs Union, then we have the same trading relationships with the rest of the world, i.e. Um, fixed agreements on tariffs from as the EU. outside Europe, as the so EU does. So should we remain a member? I suspect we're not going to be allowed to remain a member, so that means we've got to then develop our own um, trade policies with the rest of the world. And this is where it becomes very complicated because uh, if we can't trade with the rest of the world under current agreements and we have to develop new trade arrangements, so, it becomes very complicated. So again, on the, on the customs union, the broad principle of the policy is the same as the government. Norway, for example, is uh, not a member of the EU but does follow the customs union rules and has trade on that basis. No, no Norway is in the single market, but it's not a member of the Customs Union. No, it's not a, union. not a member of it, but it but, does follow the... But you agree with the government that we can't be in the Customs Union, even if we want it to be. You say we should honour our obligations in leaving the EU. It's the so-called divorce settlement. 
Do you think that that would come anywhere near the 50 billion pounds that well, the EU's talking about? I'm not really sure where this 50 billion figure comes from. There are obviously issues about ongoing commitments to staff and, of course, and which things the Prime like Minister this. Talked which, about, but which, as I said, so I that's a different matter. But there's the other way around: is the agreements that have been made with the European Union for, for example, capital investment programmes on our railways in the southwest and uh, southeast Wales. All those agreements. We either have to pick them up and fund them ourselves or carry on through right. European funding. So all that's got to be set against the costs. But um, so is it I, don't know where, where, I don't know where this 50 billion so figure comes so from. So could you imagine it being close to 50 no, billion? No, I couldn't. If the Prime Minister doesn't meet all six of your tests, Will Labour vote against the final deal when it comes before Parliament? Keir Starmer's made our position very clear on this in his speech at Chatham House on Monday, that we set down those points. Those are our points about protection of jobs, protection of conditions, trade arrangements with the European Union. Right. And obviously, if those aren't met, then we will not support it. We would vote against it. And you would vote against it? Yeah. Even if the consequence of that meant, would mean that we would crash out, in your words, no. on WTO this is, rules. This is where the pressure from the Labour Party and uh, opposition to the government of ensuring f two things. One is there is a final vote in the British Parliament because the government didn't want that. And secondly, there is regular reporting to the British Parliament. Mm. We will be holding them to account of all the way through. I and if there's not likely to be an agreement, then surely the obvious thing no. to do from both the point of view of the 27 other countries Commission and Parliament and us is to continue those negotiations by an extension and within Article 50 there is provision to continue you negotiations beyond You need all 27 members to agree. You need all 27 to agree to and it. And if this they didn't, what would happen? Well, if it didn't, you'd have to argue very strongly with them. But I have done my best to reach out to colleagues in socialist parties in every one of the 27 member states to do two things. One is to help us reach a sensible agreement with Europe, but also to help protect British nationals living in their but countries. But not many of your socialist colleagues are in government in Europe. But some are. Not many. Well, some so are, they're not but they're still a factor in politics. They're still a factor in those Sure, parties. but they're not in government. Well, Would you support a second referendum? on the outcome of the negotiations? At the moment, no, I wouldn't. I don't see the... Uh, I see we've made a decision in this referendum and I think the, the part, uh, it's been put to politicians in the Parliament to deal with the issue. And uh, we campaigned for a Remain vote. That was not successful in the end. The country voted to leave. We respect the result of the referendum and we want to be able to speak for the entire country in holding the government to account. People might have let, voted to leave the European Union. They didn't vote themselves out of a job at the same time. Now, both you and the Prime Minister were Remainers in the referendum campaign. Mrs May as you heard there now sounds like an enthusiast for Brexit. Uh, you said before the referendum you were 7 out of 10 on staying in the EU. Um, how much are you out of 10 now on leaving? Well, we're leaving, so... Um, are you 10 we, out of 10? Well, th there isn't a debate because we are leaving. But are you becoming I enthusiastic like her? Am I becoming enthusiastic like her? No, no, I'm not as enthusiastic like her. What I'm about, about Brexit? I no, Brexit is happening. There is no debate about it. It is happening. It's a question of how we leave and the terms in which we leave and the relationship we have with Europe in the future. My concern in the referendum was that I wanted to see, as I said in one of your earlier questions, a reformed European Union. I wanted much more of a social Europe and much more equality across the continent because that is a problem but there is also huge issues facing this country on inequality poverty and injustice which we have to face what controls because if and when we leave or when we leave um, we will have to devise a number of policies which we haven't had to as members one of them is on immigration from the European Union at the moment there is free movement because that's a condition of membership of the EU and the, yeah. the single market what controls would you place on migration from the EU post-Brexit? Well, it depends what the trade deal is, quite clearly, and what insistence is put there. But Britain has benefited greatly from European workers here. Our health service relies on them. Many of our high-tech industries do. 
um, and indeed British workers all across Europe. So there's going to always be quite a big movement I, I across, across the borders, and I think we right. have to accept that. But would you, put any, control, that. Would you put any controls mm. on it? Um, I, what I would do is end the process of agencies recruiting people mm. to come into this country and undercut construction workers, undercut people in call centres and factories, and make sure that there is local advertising of jobs yeah. and proper wages and conditions rather than the undercutting that goes on. But let's be serious about this. Our country is an industrial country as well as having service industries and agricultural industries. All of those in part need European workers to keep them going. As indeed so British workers would you have, uh, uh, do. Would you have any controls on EU migration to the UK. Well, clearly, uh, under any future arrangements, there will have to be an agreement on British people going to work in Europe and European people coming to work in, in Britain. But we're going to always have a close relationship because everybody, me absolutely, is signed up to the concept that all EU nationals currently resident here I, must have a permanent right of residence. I, I they have families that. and family reunion issues will take place. I, I, so there's always going to be a lot of movement. I, I understand that of the people here and I asked the Prime Minister about that. But I just want to be clear. Would the movement of people in your view out when we leave the EU, would it really be any different from where it is now? I suspect it will probably be different because both sides would um, have a debate about that. But Actually, we're two years away from this decision. But you don't have a policy design yet, will you? We will be consulting on this and working out a policy proposal on this. And quite obviously, at the moment, the issue is one of the terms of trade with Europe and protection of EU nationals here and British nationals living in other parts of Europe. Your Shadow Home Secretary, Diane Abbott, she says free movement is a worker's right. Mm -hmm. Now, you're very big on workers' rights, so you wouldn't really want to take that away, would she, you? She supports the principle that um, workers should be able to seek the best job that they can, and that is what goes on at the present time. You? My point and her point, and I'm sure she would agree with this if she was on this programme, is the way in which groups of workers, particularly from two or three Eastern European countries, have been grotesquely exploited in this country. That is a shame on us, and it's terrible for them. Scotland voted to remain in the EU in the referendum. The Scottish Government was elected with a second referendum in its manifesto. The Scottish Parliament has voted for one this very week. Would you deny the Scots a second referendum? I don't think the Westminster Parliament should block a referendum once it's been proposed by the Scottish Parliament. I'm not actually in favour of a second referendum, and I think the economic arguments in Scotland are very serious and very strong. There's a 15 billion gap mm. between Scottish taxation income and the requirements of Scottish public services. And so I've made that argument in Scotland at the Scottish Labour right. Party conference but and other places. you would grant the First Minister a, a referendum then in her um, time She scale. has made, the Parliament rather, not she, the Parliament has made the reference to it, has agreed that it wants to do it. I don't support that, but, but I but don't, we, but I think under devolution, we agreed devolution yeah. in 1997, I don't think Westminster should block it, but I think there should be a serious discussion about the timing of it, because if the referendum occurs during the Brexit negotiations, it becomes a bit complicated. I understand And also, that, but, but Scotland I'm would not necessarily be able to join the EU. Would you back uh, Miss Sturgeon's timetable, which she said from the end of 18 to the beginning of 19, or not? I would say that it shouldn't take place, if it takes place, until after the Brexit negotiations have been completed. Like Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland voted to remain. Now, you've been a huge supporter of United Ireland in the past. Is it time for a referendum on that? Um, I think we have to recognise that there is going to be an enormous complication about Northern Ireland border with the Republic uh, after the exit from the European Union. Nobody wants a hard border. Everybody wants to support the Belfast Agreement. The Belfast Agreement is built in the whole European Union arrangements and so there's going to have to be an agreement 
on movement of people and goods across the border between the Republic and the Six Nations. So would you welcome a referendum on a united Ireland? That's up to the people of Northern Ireland to Did decide whether they want a referendum. There if, the, if the Northern Ireland Assembly wants to have one, then they should be allowed to. But I do think the, it, the important thing now is to reach an agreement to ensure that on the good relationship between the six counties and the Republic continues. And, and that the border the, stays open. Well, and the border is absolutely open oh. so that people can freely move across it. Jeremy Corbyn, thank you. Thank you.